Hi, I'm Josh. Uh, we're in my shop in Detroit, Michigan, and today I'm working on a project for the puppies making a dog dish holder. Currently, I'm sort of in the middle of it. I've taken my Spectrum 625 Extreme Plasma Cutter and chopped out circles in the middle of it for the glass dishes to sit in. Uh, right now, I'm going to be cutting the outside uh, profile of the top and then we'll be adding some sides made out of mild steel and using silicon bronze to put them together. Warning, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. All right, so now I'm gonna cut out the top of the dog dish holder. Uh, we're using stainless, which just for your information, can the edges cut a little rough using a plasma cutter. So what you'll wanna do is give yourself just a little bit of extra room on the edges and then you'll sand it down with a, an angle grinder, flat disc, something along those lines to finish it. So you see the edges are a little bit rough. You get a little sugaring like you would if you were doing a, a TIG weld where the stainless steel surface was exposed to the atmosphere because uh, that's basically what happened. It gets heated up and it gets exposed to the atmosphere and it has a little reaction, but this can be ground off. In extreme cases, it can be chipped off too, uh, but it just means you gotta sand it a little bit. Right now, we switch over. We're cutting mild steel, pretty thin stuff, so we've turned the plasma cutter down to the lower end of the 240 range. The nice thing about the Spectrums is that you can run them on 120 or 240. So if you only have 120 in your garage or you're on a work site where you only can use 120, it works for that. If you're at home and you want to cut some really thick stuff or you just want a smoother cut using less energy, the 240 is there too. So right now we have it at 240 and we have kind of at the lower range of the 240 to slice through this mild steel. All right, so I've got the ends of the dog dish holder, kind of the legs if you will, and I'm clamping them together to grind them to keep them symmetrical. So now I'm going to clean up the edges of the stainless steel. You can see there's a little bit of sugaring from the plasma cut. I clamped it up tight to the table so it doesn't wobble and kind of to the edge to make sure I don't take too much off. So I measured the top end to end and it's 14 inches. So that's what I'm going to cut the side support to. Uh, and then I'll use this and I'll do kind of a butt joint there at the corner. So this angle iron is going to be the side, kind of give it some support and it'll look cool too. Uh, it's 14 inches so I'm cutting 14 inches. I measured down, I'm going to take my uh, metabo and cut it off right there. All right, so I have all the main pieces cut and I'm gonna tack them together now. You wanna minimize your finish welding before you get to the end product because it'll, uh, it'll cause more warp warping early on. Now there's some times where if you can't get to a weld, you have to do it, but overall it's better to wait until you have the structure, tack it together, and then you can start firm welding it. I'm going to use silicon bronze and stainless steel on this project. Now, if you're gonna use both fillers, you wanna use the stainless rod first, or if you're using mild steel, use that first because you can take silicon bronze and braze it, TIG braze it over stainless or mild, but if you go the opposite way, it makes a giant mess. So I'm gonna start by tacking this together with stainless steel. So the next step is welding it together. I've got it tacked into place, how I kind of want the overall shape. And we're gonna use silicon bronze to electric braze or TIG braze uh, the seams. So. You're using a TIG torch, it's very much like TIG welding, but you're not necessarily melting the base metal. We're gonna use the Multimatic 220. It has both AC and DC capabilities, so we're gonna do some of it on DC, some of it on the AC, kind of show the difference, uh, and finish this bad boy up.
so we finished up this piece. All the brazing is done. And now we're gonna focus on the center holes for the dog dishes, which I made too big. So the fix, rather than weld beads all the way around the inside, is I'm gonna weld tabs. I'm gonna weld three tabs around. And to do that, I needed something to back the edges because with stainless steel, if it's exposed to the atmosphere, heated up, you'll get carbide precipitation, which is if you're doing an open joint and you look at the back of it and you don't have a back purge, it's the black sugary stuff that, that comes. So we don't want that. So we're using a, a bar of copper and it doesn't weld to the steel. So you've got this nice little shelf to build an edge on and it'll protect the back side. And then when you're done, you unclamp it, you pop it off and it's all good. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Our dog dish holder is complete. It's kind of an open-end project. Like You could use whatever materials you want. We chose to use a stainless steel top with mild steel around the edges, and then we TIG brazed it with silicon bronze all around the outside. AC and DC, which was kind of neat. I'm super stoked with how it turned out. So you can make something that you're proud of that is a centerpiece of your place. You can fit it to where you live. We have an industrial loft, so this fits the style of our loft. And I love my dogs, so only the best custom made for them.